Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a look at the all new Pat Menu version 2.0. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Before we get started, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Before we get to actually installing Pat Menu 2, we need to grab a couple of dependencies that the script requires. Now, as always, make sure you do a sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade before you install new packages on your Raspberry Pi. The first one we need to make sure we have installed, we'll do sudo apt-get install yad, y-a-d. Go ahead and press return. And you'll see that that one is already the newest version on this particular Pi. The next one we need to get is sudo apt-get install jq. Go ahead and press return and give that one just a couple of minutes to install. Now that we have the dependencies satisfied, let's go ahead and get to Pat Menu 2. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is head over to the GitHub site, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below and also maybe across the screen right here. Once we get to this page, let's scroll down to the install section that you see here. And we've got one simple command that we need to copy and then run on the Raspberry Pi. Now, for this installation portion, I'm running on a clean Raspberry Pi. The only thing installed is the original version of Pat Menu. And I wanted to install that uh, just to show you guys that it will pick up your current settings. So uh, I, I've already got Pat Menu 1 configured and uh, ready to work. But let's go ahead and install Pat Menu 2. So let's right click and paste in that command that we copied from the GitHub page and go ahead and press return. And it only takes it a couple of seconds to get installed. Now you will notice a couple of errors here on my particular build. That's because I do not have Pat Winlink installed on this particular machine. It is literally a clean, uh, a clean install of Buster with just Pat Menu. You should not see these errors when you install. Now notice over here that we have a new folder on the desktop. If we open that, these are any configuration files that you had from Pat Menu 1. It makes a copy and just puts them on your desktop in the uh, config-backups folder just in case you need to reference those going forward. Now let's go ahead and go up to the main Pi uh, menu here. And normally if you have the ham radio section down here, you would find Pat Menu in the ham radio subcategory of the main menu. Since I don't have that and that hasn't been installed on this one, I'm going to find mine right here under internet. So I'll go ahead and open up Pat Menu. You notice down here that it went ahead and loaded up my call sign. It read that information from version 1. If you didn't have version 1 installed and you're doing a clean install with Pat Menu 2, you will have to go in and change your configuration settings. Let's jump over to a full-blown working machine and let me show you guys some of the new features. So if you're setting this up for the first time or maybe it didn't uh, bring in one of the configuration files that you expected it to, you can come down here to settings and configuration and view your current config file settings using the top button. Here we can make all of the changes that we need to and click the update button to update those settings. Something new that we've built in, well, it was available in version 1, but it was very clumsy and cumbersome to set up and uh, configure. But that's the ability to save different configuration files. And that's really handy if you're going to uh, maybe be using the same Raspberry Pi with two different radios. So maybe one uh, sitting in the shack on the desk, but you use the same Pi with a different radio when you go out portable. We now have the option to save different configuration files for each radio. All you would need to do is click uh, create a new config file 
It will pick up some of the settings out of your current configuration file, but it may not grab all of them. So I'll go ahead and set uh, the rig control here to yes, and let's change uh, the 2 meter packet mode to be PKT-FM. We'll go ahead and click the create button down here and it's going to ask me to give the new configuration file a name. Maybe this one is for my 857 uh, radio, so I'll just call it 857 and go ahead and press return. You'll get a message that the 857 config file has been created, but it has not been loaded. We need to load that before we can actually use it. Let's say OK for that, and then we'll click this last button here that says load the config file you'll see that new 857 config file here that we just created so we can highlight it and go ahead and load that file up. Now back on the main menu the start RDOP modem and start packet modem and stop modems works just like they did in the original version. Find WinLink gateways works a bit different. We'll go ahead and click on that and if we use the first option search for gateways That'll allow us to enter the grid that we'd like to search, the band that we would like to search on, and then we could select Search RDOP. Or if you want to see packet stations within 150 kilometers of your station, you can click Search Packet. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the 40 meter RDOP stations in the Echo Mic grid. We'll click Search RDOP and we'll get a list of those stations returned. So if we want to add any one of these stations to our current alias list, we simply highlight that and choose the Add Alias button. Now, currently we, can, we have to do this one at a time. We don't have the option to select multiples. That's something I want to work on and bring to you guys in the future. But for now, we'll have to do those one at a time. So let's go ahead and click the Add Alias button, and you'll see that the alias has been added to Pat Winlink. Once you're done and you have the stations you need, you can simply click Cancel, and it will take you back to the Find Gateways list. Now, if you want to view a map, you can click uh, here to view the grid map. Now it will depend on which map you selected in your uh, config settings as to which one gets viewed. I believe I have the USA map currently selected, so if I click on view map, it's going to bring up a PDF map uh, of, the, of the grid squares in the United States. But you could set that to be uh, for a world map as well in your configuration settings. Next up, we have a button that will download the current uh, gateway list. Uh, so you just click on this and it'll go ahead and download the most current list. You'll also notice down here at the bottom, it tells you when the list was last downloaded. The last button here is the auto list download. You'll notice I have 530 listed here in bold letters. That's letting me know that I have the list set to auto download every morning at 5.30. If you don't see a uh, time here, it's because you haven't set your auto download yet. If we want to change the time that it's going to be downloaded, we simply click on Auto List Download and choose a new time. So let's go ahead and just change this to uh, 6 a.m. We'll click the Update button. We get a little pop-up that tells us that has been changed. And when it returns to the other menu, you'll see that this is now changed to 6 a.m. PAT Auto Connect works pretty much exactly like it did in version 1. So if we click on that, it's going to ask you what bands you want to try, what's the minimum and maximum distances, and then you could go ahead and click Start the Connection. PAT Catalog can be used to request different reports through the WinLink system. So if we click on Pack Catalog, you'll see several different reports that we can uh, request. Uh, and those would be posted to your WinLink Outbox. You would send those out, give it about five minutes, and then you would make another WinLink connection for that report to come back into your inbox. So you can request an updated gateway list. Uh, you can get weather reports. 
We can do position reporting, both posting and requesting, propagation reports, and news reports. And the last section that we have here is Manage Pat Winlink. Let's go ahead and click on that one. You can log in or log out of PAT uh, using this. So maybe you're at field day and want to pass off the station to a second operator. You could use this menu here to quickly log out of PAT and allow him to log in so that he could be using his own call sign if he wanted to make a WinLink connection. The next button down is the GPS grid update and this simply updates the grid that uh, is held in the PAT configure file. Maybe that would be handy if you were traveling. Another feature we have built into this is the ability to set the RDOP speed. So by default, that is set at 500 in PAT WinLink, but there's times that we might want to speed that up or slow that down a bit. Uh, we could speed it up for a better throughput, but you need uh, pretty optimal band conditions and have a good signal to noise ratio. If you're in less than optimal conditions, you might want to slow that down a bit. So we give you the ability to set that right inside of PAT menu. The next option down allows us to delete an alias. So if we click on that, you will get a list of all of the aliases currently in PAT menu. You'll notice this is the one that we added just a few minutes ago, the WW4MSK. If we highlight that, we can click delete and it will remove that station from our alias list. We also have the option to backup and restore all of the emails currently in PAT menu. And the last two options give you the ability to backup and store the actual PAT configuration file. Now, for those that might not be familiar with the PAT configure file, let's open up the terminal and type PAT configure. Go ahead and press return. This is the actual PAT WinLink configuration file. So all of the changes that you're doing in PAT menu are actually happening in this file here. So if you add an alias or delete an alias, it's taking them out here. When you log in and log out, it's uh, making changes up here to your call sign and your password. But it's a little bit easier to do it with the menu system rather than have to come in here and mess with this configuration file. This guy can be tricky. One comma out of place and Pat won't even load anymore. Okay guys, well there's a look at Pat Menu 2.0. I hope you enjoy it. Please give us a thumbs up before you head off. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.